You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Hi, I am recording artist Marilyn Dunn from St. Louis, Missouri. If you are looking for some soul-stirring, anointed, spiritual, and heartfelt music, visit my website at www.marilynnministries.com. Or you can also find me on CD Baby, iTunes, and Reverb Nation. For booking information, contact Mr. Kevin Dunn at 636 856-0551. That's 636-856-0551. Hi, this is Charles P. Walker, saxophonist, world recording artist, and I'm on Jerry Ross Live. You are listening to PositivePower21.org with Jerry Ross. What up, it's your boy Kano Kingston. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. Hey, this is Kat. Hi, I'm Teresa Powell. Hi, Jerry, this is Iowa Sandro Carter. Hi, this is Paul Powers. Hello, this is Teresa Bobby with Jerry Royce Live. Hi, I'm Phil LeBurn. I'm live on the Jerry Royce Show. Hey, what do you do? Boy, who's the same? Hey, this is Dolly, the poet, spoken word artist. Hello, this is Ramon Marquis with Jerry Worth Live. All right, all right, everyone. we got Robin Lynn, and I'm keeping it live right now on Jerry Royce Live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up? This is a world winning podcast with the greatest podcast on earth. Thank you for stopping by. I'm your host, Jerry Royce Live Worldwide on Internet Radio. Where you get your positive on. So when it's all positive, it's all power. That's positive power. This is a worldwide podcast for growth, wealth, and success. Thank you. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey, inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Hardy, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse, a suspense thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or DonnaInc.org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Are you looking for the next great read? A book filled with love, passion, betrayal, and intrigue. The award-winning novel, Season of Change, by Tamika Patrice Kane is sure to satisfy your literary sweet tooth. Check out this must-read book reviewers are calling uplifting and emotional and exceptionally great read, deeply intense, and thought-provoking. Order your copy today. Available in paperback and ebook on Amazon.com or at www.TamikaPatrice.com. Are you an author looking for promotional services or a reader looking for a great read at low prices? In this competitive world of books, Writing Royalty Promotions is dedicated to bringing authors and readers together to build a greater respect for literature through our various promotional services and online bookstore. So head over to writingroyaltypromotions.com and check us out. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and welcome to PositivePower21.org. I am Jerry Royce Live, and you're listening to Episode 327 with saxophonist and recording artist Charles P. Walker. That's right, his bio, re- well, before I read his bio, don't let me forget about our sponsor for today's show, and that is Reach World Publishing, so stay tuned for a 30-second presentation of Reach World Publishing. <laughs> Are you an avid reader of urban fiction, looking for drama, suspense, and more? 
reads who are publishing is dedicated to bringing the world's best literature to our readers. Urban fiction, erotica, sci-fi, mainstream fiction, and children's literature are just some of the genres produced by our diversified family of authors. You can reach us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at our website, www.readsworldpublishing.com. All right, everybody. Welcome back. Appreciate you tuning in tonight to Joy Voice Live Worldwide on PositivePower21.org. For those of you that are listening to us on Spreaker, Spreaker.com, Positive Power 21. Don't forget you can visit our website at www.PositivePower21.org where you can listen to all our shows streaming 24-7. And you got an opportunity to check out some of our, our new releases, some of the books of some of our guests and music. Is, is hitting them Amazon top sellers list right now. So if you want to be able to make a quick purchase, one click, bam, and it's, it's your own. You own it on a secure website like Amazon.com, the big monster of online retailer. And don't forget too, my good friend under my brand, Tanika Joy Gonzalez, going to be uh, pushing her spoken word LP, which is so awesome. So many powerful messages, you know. You know, you hear some pain, you hear some hurt, but passion, love, all that's right in the LP. I think it's like 12 poems, and she reads so so adequately. And also, the music is, 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 is superb with her voice, so I think you enjoy it. Good listen. All right, everybody, let's talk to Charles P. Walker. Let's read his bio. The name of his CD is called Life Changing, a journey called Grace. It's about 15 tracks. Born in Hueytown, Alabama, Charles began playing the saxophone at the age of 12. Two years later, at the age of 14, his unique skills and passion for music opened the door of opportunity for him to begin playing at the Hopefield Baptist Church in Whitelam, Whitelam, Alabama. Charles quickly became one of Birmingham's most sought-after saxophonists. His musical influence and styles attributed to the likes of Global Washington, Cannonball, Kirk Whalem, Gerald Albright. However, his music carries a distinction that is like no other. In the year 2001, Charles moved to the music city of Nashville, Tennessee, where he quickly began to engage with some of the industry's most elite artists. His studio sessions with countless artists and his contributions to many projects with notable artists such as Bernard Harris, Kevin Whalem, for opening for Snooky Newell and Donnie, Donnie McClurkin, and sharing the stage with many contemporary Christian artists, including the Planet Shakers, Jamie Grace, and band members from Royal Taylor and Building 429, and respectfully kept Charles' name on the lips of many artists across the country. Charles is one of the featured artists at the biannual Kingdom Global World Connect Conference, the Music Boat, and Kayla Christian Cruises. All right, man, what a bio, powerful brother. All right, let's bring him on. Mr. Charles P. Walker, welcome to Jerry Lewis Live Worldwide on PositivePower21.org. How you doing, sir? Doing fine, doing just fine. Thanks for having me. Yeah, my pleasure, Charles. We're glad to have you, sir, and, you know, welcome you to uh, the Maryland, D.C. metro area, where my audience love to get to know you, man. So the first question for Mr. Mr. Walker is, who is Charles P. Walker, the saxophonist and recording artist? Well, Charles Walker, I'm just a, um, I guess a country boy from Birmingham, as you heard in the bio. Um, she grew up in a family of, of uh, five, my mother, father, and had a brother and sister, and um, actually I always wanted to be a drummer. And uh, by the time I entered into the seventh grade, I decided to give a uh, saxophone and trumpet a tryout and then I had to try to decide what I want to hear. And at that time, I think I heard uh, Grover Washington Jr. and uh, some others, uh, Gerald Albright and Cannonball Adderley, and and uh, they just wowed me. I just really uh, liked what they did and um, took a liking to the saxophone, and, and that's what I decided to go with. And uh, growing up, my father was really the only person in the family that had any, I guess, type of musical talent. Um, he actually sang at church, and uh, we grew up in church. My mom and dad always uh, made sure that we, they raised us up uh, as Christians and God fear and, and um, wanted to make sure that we were in church. So I uh, had the opportunity at around age 12 to uh, 
play in church and um, got a chance to to really um, experience playing outside of the house, you know, and but in your room and getting those nerves and those cobwebs off of you and um, <laughs> pastor uh, let me play and um, I just I loved it and just start seeing how it, it just kind of blessed people and um, just thought I had something going there and I really liked it and it, it, it touched me in a way I'd never been touched so I decided I would just keep keep at this um, I think growing up a lot of people um, you know, they call you band nerd and, you know, you're not popular and everything, but it's, you know, mighty funny how most of those people, you know, calling me to play for either their wedding or something they had going on. <laughs> but, um, that's just something that I've always wanted to do. And thank God is still able to do that. Um, finally, uh, went to college and I was, met Gerald Albright. I was really fortunate to meet Gerald and Kurt Whalen. And, and uh, I was asking Gerald, because I knew he was a, a guy that was married and out on the road. And, you know, you hear a lot of artists that uh, relationships don't work out because they're on the road all the time. And, and, just, and that's one thing that really scared me. So I talked to him and he was like, uh, you know, one thing, you always want to do is find someone that has similar interests or at least uh, like what you do or understand what you do. Because the last thing you want is to, you know, have to go play somewhere or perform and they don't want you to go. So I um, met my wife um, at the time and we both uh, were playing in church and she was a musician too, great, great piano player. And so we actually had that that similarity where we played together a lot and all over the city of Birmingham and um, decided to move here to Nashville back in 2001 and um, tried to get connected into the, the music scene here and um, finally uh, met an awesome bass player named Bernard Harris. Um, I'm sure some of the people that are listening have heard of him. He's just awesome he does amazing stuff on the base it's crazy mm -hmm. we got to play with him and travel and um recorded a cd and uh some of the songs that i put on the cd were uh, really just kind of uh, uh just kind of a uh, testament to what i went through at that time um you know uh, don't have funds to finish it you know it's very expensive to record and so just kind of hearing, hearing the Holy Spirit telling me, just keep going, keep going, and just really being in that season where you uh, are obedient to the Holy Spirit and just listen to God and just step out there on faith. And we got this thing finished and it's been traveling all over the world, been to Brazil. Hopefully uh, we'll get to Africa and uh, traveling over the U.S. and uh, playing and ministering uh, in the song to different people, and um, it's just been a blessing. So that's kind of uh, the life of Charles Walker in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> and Charles, while we got you in alignment, where can people find your your um, your, your release, man? Your, your digital. Where can they find it? Yes, they can go to uh, my website, which is www.charlespwalker.com that's Charles P like P is in Paul walker.com or they can go to iTunes or CD Baby or Amazon and uh, they can purchase there uh, on my website you can purchase the physical copy and have it shipped to you or you can purchase a digital download and um, you can also find me on Twitter it's Charles P. Walker the number one on Twitter, and then you can find me on Facebook under Charles P. Walker. All right, because I was actually trying to locate it on um, on um, Amazon, I couldn't find it. I saw Bernard, so he mm -hmm. he, he has several CDs out there, but I I could not find yours. But I guess I might have to um, spend some more time at that, get the actual uh, copy from you. So you said it's actually under Charles. 
Under, so we look under music. So they need to go to music, right? Yes. So we're on the music. The gym music. We put in Charles P. <coughs> Charles P. Walker. Let's see if we can find it now. Maybe I forgot to put the period on there. That's probably what it was. All right, here we go. I got it, man. Here we are. All right, eight ninety nine. They can own it. Hey, man, you do have a lot of songs out there, man. All right. Now, now while we have you on here now and we're talking about, you know, you, your music, I found on Amazon, we're going to play one of your cuts. Short piece for everybody to get a chance to hear the sounds of Charles P. Walker. So hold tight, everybody. We're going to listen to the sounds of Charles P. Walker, the saxophones and recording artist. <laughs> Not the time, not the place. Is that, that's, is that correct? Not the time, not the place? Uh, I yes, that is. A that, couple of tracks. That uh, is. That that's is awesome. Actually, uh, beautiful, beautiful, man. Thanks. Thank you. Now, Charles, that's a, now a lot of times, you know, when, when people when people had the opportunity to, to listen to a beautiful you know, piece like that, you know, saxophone, you know, I have never heard a bad saxophone. Well, maybe, maybe in middle school, you had a bad saxophone player. But um, once you start getting up to the professionals, you know, playing in nightclubs and play, they'd never, they'd never hear the, the likes of Charles Walker in a, in a, in a jazz club or, or Blues Alley or any place like that, wouldn't they? Um, yeah, actually, um, I used to, when I lived in Birmingham, I, uh, I played at a, a few places down there. Uh, the 22nd Street Jazz Cafe downtown Birmingham. That's a, a popular spot. Uh, that's owned by uh, a singer in Birmingham named Ona Watson. Uh, so he has an uh, owner's place, and I think it's actually still uh, up and running. Uh, I played there before, and uh, played here in town at a uh, down in uh, Printer's Alley, down at BB King's downtown Nashville. Um, so yeah, I I love playing and um, I try to keep the music inspirational, or, you know, and, and just have fun. You know, we we play the old school stuff and uh, some new school stuff, but you know, a lot of this new school stuff now, man, it's you have to watch out for those lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> you sure do, man. That is the truth. That is the truth. I remember we used to have a. A real popular jazz spot here um, years ago it was actually named after um, a famous jazz singer. I don't know why I can't think of her name because um, they have changed the name of those places. You know, um, I think Blues Alley ended up taking over that spot, but I, I'll find her name in a minute. But um, we don't really have too many places in the Baltimore area to go to, except for this one spot that's downtown. But I know in D.C. they used to have a couple of places where uh, you know um, gifted you know, professional, you know, musicians can get together and play. And, and the Blues Alley is one of the most popular places now. We, we have a good friend named Lori Williams that played there. She uh, got a chance to get some talented uh, musicians together, play for her. Um, so it's, it's good to hear, man. You know, you know, a lot of people, you know, they don't have the opportunity to follow a lot of gospel artists because, you know, you guys, you know, it's hard to, a lot of people don't understand how to track you guys. Um, except for when award shows come on, that's when you start hearing about you, even though gospel music is so big. Um, yeah. In your opinion, Charles, when, when, when do you think it's going to become, is there any chance of, you know, with the help of the Internet, becoming mainstream for a lot of us, man? You know, I honestly, based on my experience, I, I, 
I don't see it. I, you know, it's sad to say that. Um, but until we get past the, um, you know, I want to get mine, so you can get yours on your own. And until we can come together and work together as a unit in the gospel industry um, and as a people, um, it's going to be difficult to kind of get us out there um, to, you know, be on the forefront to be known. Oh, wow. Yeah. But, you know, what's so weird, though, is that you have these mega churches. You know, and I'm not trying to put no no bishops down, no pastors down, nobody. But you have some of the largest stages in this country, big mega churches, especially Texas, even Washington D.C. And this this seems like this is an opportunity for people to really, you know, get exposed to gospel music at its finest. But it's always just a little teeny tap piece of the. <laughs> you know, of the, of the, of the well, I'm not going to say show, but, you know, of the service. You know, a lot of times people arrive a little late, so they don't get a chance to get to praise and worship. But I remember going to a, a Methodist church, and this pastor, he, he, he used this ba- Baptist choir to pack his church to two services. Yeah. Because he gave them the stage. You know, after he did his 20p, he gave you the word, got you thinking, you know, about your good and your bad life. Then he just killed you with that Baptist man. He had people crying in the aisles, man, and they were just crawling to him, man, asking for forgiveness and to be saved. That dude had the community packed up. I said, why? I wonder why a lot of those guys don't use that form. Use music, the ministry of music. Can you tell us, man, your own words, which, why you think they don't let the music upstage him? Um, I think um, music has always been designed to usher usher people into the presence of God. Uh, It was never meant to be the reason people uh, are in church, Uh, but it's always meant to usher people into the presence of God. And you're right, um, music is a powerful thing, and and it does attract uh, the masses or attract people to come to church and um, I've seen it where you know it's work and, and ministers they know that and, and, and it has helped their congregation grow I've seen where um, some ministers they um, may get a little jealous and may try to not shut it down but you know just kind of let them know that it's about me and it's not it's not about music, it's not about that one person, it's not about no one person, it's about bringing and saving and bringing souls to, to Christ. Um, but you're right, back to your point, it is an effective way to get people in the church. Yeah, man, I'm going to tell you, bro, since I hooked up, I formed a partnership, and I'm going to say God bless Keith, Pastor Keith Powell and his wife Teresa Powell for me finding them on Facebook. They've been on my show twice. She's a singer and he's a producer and musician. And he hosts a 24-7 hour gospel show called iGospelMusic.com and uh, we partner up and I actually run that program because it was on my heart that I, I felt like I should play gospel music on Sunday. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm broadcasting Monday through Thursday and my podcast is just sitting idle. You know, mm-hmm. So they partnered with me. They agreed. I run their broadcast 24-7, you know, as long as I can on Sundays in five-hour incre- five increments. And, man, I've seen my followers, man, like, like just I look, 50 people just join, just like that. Yeah. I was like, what the heck? It got to yeah. be the music, bro. Man, people, people Crazy. are, yeah. It, people know, and they, it's just they're drawn to music. And in this day and time, people are hurting, so they're they're looking for something positive. They're looking for something that can give them hope. And when someone hears that, they may not even they may not even be in the church, but if someone hears something that kind of gives them a little glimpse of hope, that will touch their heart in some kind of way, they're gonna they're gonna listen. 
You're right, man. Because people are hurting. Man, I've been doing this show December 21st, 2014, made one year. And, Charles, I had some people that I thought was coming on here talking about a fictional book, or maybe erotica. It could be urban lit. doesn't matter. Man, it was some times, man, my audience said they were in tears because those people been, I mean, it's been some stuff happening to people in their childhood. I didn't think it was possible in the black community. I was like, what? You, you see your father did what? And this is like a, yeah. and this is like a man telling me this, too, in some cases. A woman died raiding her bedroom from the hands of two abused ex-husbands because her body couldn't take no more because she went through 15 years of marriage and just getting battered. It's like, man. Wow. You know, so you're right, man. People, people are hurting. You, feel, you put a guy like you in front of a church on a Wednesday afternoon right before the noon service, you just started playing that thing. Man, I bet you people be stopping cars to be coming in there, crawling on their knees, asking for God to save them, man. Because you're right, man. The music just touches your spirit in a yeah. way that a man's voice can't. <sighs> Bless you, man. That's Thanks powerful, so bro. Now, Charles, in your words, man, tell us an instance, man, where you've seen some stuff happen in the pulpit, in the pews that just blew your mind just for you just pushing on those keys. They call them keys, right, on the saxophone? They call keys, right? Yes, uh-huh. Um, All right, tell us an yeah. instance, man, a couple of experiences. Um, you said just something that, that kind of blew my mind. Um, I, you think music-wise or just the church experience in general? yeah. Yeah, yeah. The church experience while you was there playing, and you know you just saw some stuff. You know, people was just turning their lives over to God just through the sounds of your of your saxophone, man. You know, you had any um, experiences like that? Yes, yes, I have. I'll never forget um, this lady. Um, she actually came up to me after I was playing, and and I actually saw her, and I, I wondered why. I kept looking at her, but I could tell this lady was hurt. And she told me, she said, um, I buried my mom and I buried my sister probably within a, maybe a two month span. And she, um, she just thought that was it. Uh, her, her, her world was over. She didn't want to live anymore. And I don't, I can't remember what song I played, but she said she listened to the song after I finished, and she would just felt lifted. Her bur- all the burdens were gone, and she just felt a peace over it. It was almost like she said she she then could release her mom and her sister, and she could move on, and she had hope. And that right there, uh, to hear that, because you know we as musicians, uh, it's 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 a tough field to be in. And sometimes when you feel like nothing's going right or, um, you know, then the, the devil starts making you wonder if you're making a difference, you know, am I wasting my time? And for someone to come up to me, I'm talking for my, and through my experience, to tell me how uh, a song that I played touched them and it changed their life in that way. It, it, it just, it blesses me. And it makes me want to do more. Yeah, that's powerful, man. That is powerful. Now, and Charles, tell us a little bit. What's what's, so, what's tough about the industry for musicians, man? Um. Well, one is when you are, you know, it, it, it's very expensive. You need a lot of funding. So um, when you have labels involved, you know, it's it, a lot of times they'll get in there and if you sign with a label, they want to all of a sudden start making decisions on how your music should sound instead of actually um, um, really using what attracted them to that artist in the first place. So they take sometimes take an artist and then they want to mold them into what they want them to sound like uh, or what they think will sell. And then that, that end up not really being the artist, you know, or uh, even for independent, mm-hmm. or unless you have a lot of money, you got to try to put everything in yourself, which can be hard. And, um, you know, you, you're out there. A lot of times it's, 
uh, people don't really want to pay. They want you to do a lot of stuff for, you know, for you know a little or nothing, or a favor here or there. But you know, uh, going out singing through microphones, using equipment, playing through saxophones, that stuff is expensive. So just like they have things that they, you know, if you're a business owner, you have certain things that you need to to uh, upkeep and pay for to keep your business going. You know, we as musicians or instrumentalists need to have uh, money or funds to be able to do repairs and to purchase more equipment, better equipment to keep our business going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Charles, now mm-hmm. let's go back to my other question about the platform the churches, man. You have more churches almost on every corner in the metro city as you have liquor stores. You got your liquor stores, you got your Chinese store, and you got about three, four, five churches in square foot to every Chinese store and liquor store. Why? Why? Nobody has a weekend establishment that's for Christian people to be able to gather so you'd be able to meet some, some, you know, some nice Christian young ladies, you know, who's not venturing to the secular world to find herself a man. You know, while we don't see the gospel community or the Christian community stepping up, I mean, even the Catholics, you know, they have, you know, a lot of them have their own organizations where people are chartered members. Why you don't see that in the African-American, you know, community, community, man, right. at that level? Right. Um, I think... Um, I think maybe, in my opinion, I think growing up in a tradition, I think it is uh, uh, maybe a part of the black that, you know, people get so used to growing up and they go to church. So they go to a building with steeple on it, with a cross on it, with pews. This is church. And... They have church there. They praise God there. They, you know, they talk about the Bible there. They pray, and they go home. Well, you you don't, and instead of realizing that the church is not in those four walls, the church is out out there everywhere. So, like you said, yeah, we do need more churches to get outside of the four walls, stop being ready to get out in a community. And make themselves known, the presence known, and have establishments and places for Christian people to go to, to not have to, you know, be nervous about going somewhere and wondering if they're going to uh, be in the midst of a, a drive-by shooting or something, you know. That could happen anywhere. But yeah. Christians, uh, That's right. you know, they. I think a lot of Christians, would like to have more places that they can go to like that. That's right. Because, you know, um, you, you remember that show called, called, called Cheers? They used to come on with... Yeah. With, uh, yep. yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I used to always kind of picture that being a, a spot in my community where, you know, I could just go straight from work, you know, even if you just bought dinner, you know, a cup of coffee, and, you, and your friends, your homeboys were there, you know. And yeah. they're like, hey, man, everybody knew your name. You know, and you sit there and watch, the, you know, the news together. Like, like the barbershop. You know, we have such a good time in the barbershops because, you know, you're sitting around waiting, you know, about 20, 30 minutes per cut. You're talking about, you know, you're there for about two, three hours before your turn comes, so you're engaging in awesome conversation. We're watching, the, you know, right. the news together. That's when you take in a lot of stuff. But that, that happens, like, what, every other week. Right. And how come, how come you don't have, the, the, why the church don't have a, a nice barbershop laid out in the building where you can go get yourself a haircut, hang out with the brothers, and really get to know the brothers? I don't get to know those guys until the church decides to have a fundraiser or a flea market. No, they don't have movie right. night. <laughs> they show movies that yeah. I can show my kids. They'll do nothing. You know, it's like... Yeah. And the pastors in them control so much. I know they just a man, and, and people always put their label on them when they get in trouble and sleep with somebody else's wife or get caught with the pants. They say, oh, he's a man. Well, why he don't do other stuff to help the community? You come to them for stuff, and then they were like, 
Oh, bro, you got to be a member of my church or whatever. You know, it's like the buildings are so nice, man. You can have some nice concerts where people can play music that's acceptable and, you know, it's, it's godly, you know, because I don't have no problem assembling a, a gospel show, a stage play, but because they don't open their doors up, people just, they go into the secular world, man, and that's why I think you have people sitting on the fence right now of good and bad. They're not all the way in because it's only yeah. one day a week. Or luckily if they got Bible study for you and that's only an hour, and you're your own again. Yeah. They, they, I just think that they more more. should have more responsibilities to the community. And I've actually seen that increasing uh, to where churches are um, realizing that they need more stuff like that. And I um, um, actually see more of that here. And there are some churches that have, uh, you know, they'll have outings and they'll have uh, uh, little cafes and stuff for people to come and and, 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 and just kind of fellowship. And it's, it's becoming more prevalent now, uh, which is good. Um, yeah. and it, now, the thing is, too, a lot of people can't make that an excuse for not going to church. Um, everybody has to right. uh, account for themselves. They got to answer to God for themselves. So if they see someone doing something crazy that's supposed to be a Christian or in the church, they can't use that as an excuse not to go to church or not to go and 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 be uh, and be a Christian and 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 you know want to uh, learn more about God. They they got to account for themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I see I see that sometimes I've even had friends to do that where they see something wrong and I just quit going to church because I'm like well you know um, that person is going to have to answer God for themselves and when you go they can't they're not going to be the one going well God well I did this so uh, my bad okay uh, let him slip on in in the heaven you know because, because I did that, and he saw me do this. No, it don't work like that, <laughs> you know. But um, yeah, I can't right. say. It just but you know, on, on. I was going to say, I remember I had this, with this one church I went to, this pastor said he know he knew for a fact he was the last stop for a lot of, lot of men, a lot of Christian men, you know, because they've seen so much stuff. You know, from childhood to teenager to adulthood, and they like, this is it. If this guy... If he if he slips off of that that pulpit, and I hear one thing, they done. You know, they 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 they, they back to the NFL. <laughs> and I remember this guy saying that man, and he slipped. And I seen deacons rolling up out of there. And I was going to give him another chance because I said he's just a man. But the doggone deacons were gone. They were like bouncing, man. They. They was like they were disappointed because you know you sometimes you you know you look up you see somebody you think is the is the closest to God that you could touch when you're hurting inside you need to you need somebody you need to hear somebody you know you put a lot of pressure on those guys you know and I know they up against a lot of opposition they fighting probably every day and a lot of those guys is up there have come from some real stuff you know so a lot of people don't know their their history some of them were drug dealers and pimps and and con men and you know. You know all that stuff, so you know it is a lot to to put on it. But I heard, I read, you know that you know it's harder for them to get in heaven, you know, because they know they know better, you know. But yeah. I just think that the the problem with the African American community and why we are suffering so badly economically is because we don't have no network. And back in the day, man, if you ever read that book called Black Wall Street, the Oklahoma bombing. That was a community that was together by the church. They had their meetings. They had everything. They had bankers, businessmen. All of that happened with the church. The pastor kept it all together. And when that got right. destroyed, you know, that's, that's, you look around, that's what you see right now. We, we, we don't have nothing. You know, everybody's working on their own. I got people now trying to form partnership with podcasts and trying to get it together because the, the Internet is so big and we all over the place. And I respect that. So, yeah, we're starting to see some cohesiveness take place. And I'm not, I have no opposition. I want to help. I want to, I want to bring my, my 17,000 with me and join up with yours. And then we can, 
you know, it's a lot of money out there and, and information right. to share with people. So I just wanted yep. to share that with you, man. You know, what you see, you know, yeah. being there in the church, being a, you know, you traveling on the road, why you don't see the big blowing out gospel show? Because people have a good time when they go to those. I never have been to a gospel concert and had not had a good time. You right. know, spirit was going they crazy, really man. It's like, why you don't see that? They, they really do. Why, man? They Tell know. me, man. Come on. They, they well, um, I'll just say, I say something else I've experienced, um, and and it's sad. I've, um, you know, and I'm sure you've seen where you mostly hear when it comes to gospel, you think about black people. When it comes to contemporary Christian music, you think of mostly being in in, in the white congregation. Um, I've seen it where you can go to a gospel concert or something and people they a lot sometimes they don't really want to support they will go and they may want the artist to give them a CD at a much discounted price or give them something free and that's not how we as musicians survive <laughs> We can't give out stuff away, so I've seen, <laughs> seen it where we go, and um, the support for musicians financially, um, as far as supporting them by buying their music, is not as good as it can be. Um, if we can ever mm-hmm. work on that and become better with that, that will help us a lot. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it goes back to networking and being cohesive. Because, man, I've seen I've seen rappers, you know, those dudes have those huge entourage. They say, look, man, we're going to let, we're gonna let little, little, little Juju go out there first and drop his joint. We're gonna, and we're going to just throw all the CDs in the audience. You know, get, him, get his mixtape jumping and then all of us to start. I've seen DJs more together. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sad, bro. <laughs> I, I know I'm one voice. I know I'm one voice, and they all can't hear me. But man, I just think that the brothers in the pulpit, when they when they talk about the black people trying to pull it together with one leader, it ain't gonna. It don't need to be no one. It just need to be one organizer. You bring all these guys together and say, look, man. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta get this thing together. Our people, man, because our people are hurting, bro, and it's because of economics. When you can't afford to feed your kids. Them dudes that jump ship, man, and hit the streets because they don't want to see that. You know, I, I don't know everybody excuse why they're not home with their families, but I heard some guys say they just couldn't stand seeing their kid, their family like that. They would just leave. You know, yeah. in the field. The, you know, the, this men, you know, they don't have, they don't feel like a man, you know, they feel less than a man, so they just leave. Yeah. Ah, bro, we got to take a break, man. We're going to take a break real quick, all right, y'all. Then we're going we're gonna to come back. We're going to listen to your other piece. And then uh, okay. we're going to talk, we're going to talk more about the industry, man, and marketing and promoting and what you think need to happen for, for y'all to take off, okay? Okay. All right, here we go. Have you been hurt? Been hurt. Been back, back there. Got a talking back to him. Him back. Cause you're not alone. Do not escape into another reality. reality. Through Dominic Wilkins' good book. Good books of your books. Paperback. E-book. Good books. Available on author D. Wilkins. Good books. Dot com. Are you looking for a great book of poetry that is romantic, heartfelt, and full of male emotion? Then get Thoughts, Love, and Reflections by James K. Deshay. That's D-E-S-H-A-Y. Go to www.jamesdeshay.com. You will enjoy Thoughts, Love, and Reflections.
Oh man, I was about to fall into my <laughs> man. I love that. Woo, that was hot, man. Thank you. He's killing it. Thanks, man. All right, Charles. Let's talk about yes. let's talk about marketing and promoting, man. How you think the gospel industry, you as a musician, can get on top? Because even the big names like Donnie McClurkin and you know some of the other big names you talk about, Bernard Harris. You know, you don't hear about those guys until the Stella Awards come around. What do you think, you know, you guys need to do, man, in your opinion? Man, if you were the organizer, where would you, where would you start at? Uh, the organizer of, like, the Stella Awards or something, or just gospel music in, in general? Yeah, if they gave you the, the, the baton and said, Charles, here's all of them, here's the money, here's your marketing team, make us, like, mainstream, make us mainstream. People hurting out there. Doggone rap music and hip hop, pop is killing people. You know, it ain't doing nothing for nobody's community. It's just taking away. They're like vampires. But the gospel can, can wake people's spirits up, get them loving God again, stop the madness. They could do a whole bunch of stuff, healing. What would you do first? Um, I would try to make it um, definitely a more consistency to where it, it's more out there and it's seen more um i think um if you're not a fanatic or a, a diehard gospel music lover then yeah you you really don't hear about it until something you know big comes up or you may find a radio station you know i'm sure you notice you you're somewhere you're in a part of a state or somewhere where there may not even be a gospel radio station or it may be one most of the time it's AM and doesn't sound good. You can't, it's not, it didn't reach far enough out to enough people. Um, so I think if we had the, the funds to be able to um, put out into the bigger radio stations to get get more mainstream for gospel that I think will help. Yeah. Cause I'm going to tell you, man, I, I've had some gospel people on the show and, and one of the gentlemen that I had on here was, you know, he had his own mass choir <laughs> and I remember he told me about his formula to success. And it was so funny, man, cause he put together some kind of team that no matter what went wrong, this team they supposed to fix things. Their job wasn't to say, well, let's get rid of the, the owner and the director. Their, their job was to fix things. That was just so brilliant. I, mean, I forgot how he put it, but it was so funny, man. I had to listen to that show again. But um, I, I remember, um, you know, like we were talking earlier about the churches and how the music kind of can bring things together, you know. But I had a gospel performer here, that a very talented young lady, and she said she remember, um, you know, be competing or or you know being selected to, to be lead singer and it's always like a backstage mom issue going on or it's like why does she get to sing i sing better than her you know do you think it start right there too man oh yeah that's a lot of um i've seen a lot of competition and and jealousy and things you know sometimes people have to realize that when it's someone's season when when God has given them an appointed time, an appointed season, there's nothing they can do to stop that. The way God wants, to, God wants to come for it. Um, and then <clears throat> you just have people that think they ought to lead everything all the time, you know. And um, it can really be discouraging to others um, that's trying, or even others that's really, you know, just decided to go to church or to become a Christian. They really don't know a whole lot about God, but they're going to give this thing a try. And, you know, mm -hmm. they, they feel like they have felt the presence of God, and then they go in church, and they try to join the choir because they feel like they have a talent or something. And they, you know, you can't leave this because I'm leaving it or whatever. And then... It like deflates them, and they just go back in their shell. 
you know, not a good day. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I think, you know, because I'll be thinking about, um, yeah, I know we got a little delay, you know, because you know, I know some cell towers that kind of operate differently in the south than up here in the, you know, the bigger cities. So I know you got a little delay. But uh, what I was going to say is um, how many times you had a concert and people are, are going crazy when the artist is just making their, their debut into the stage. Man, what, what's that feeling like, man, when, when that happens? It's like you almost got those people in the palm of your hand. Um, it, it's always a, a good feeling to um, feel like people love your music. They love what you do. Um, but I think people have to be careful with thinking that, oh, I went out there and they're yelling because of me. Um, that's a, a dangerous line you walk because then all of a sudden you'll start thinking, I got here, I got myself here, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And nobody in this world gets to do anything or doesn't get anywhere where they are without the grace of God getting them there. Um, so I think, um, you know, as long as they can keep that in perspective and and not feel like I did this and I'm going to hit, I'm going to, I'm going to make these people clap for me and, you know, and not be self-centered, then, you know, um, They'll, they'll probably be okay. But once they started going down that, that road of thinking that they've done it, they've created, you know, what they created, and it's because of them, then they're, 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 they're on a dangerous slope down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. But, you know, being, you know, being a, you know, a, you know, normal man or woman, you know, of course, you know, you're not used to that. You know, you were on a smaller stage with your family, and they thought you were brilliant and great. And who knows, you could have had a sibling that was in the, in the, in the, in the background looking with jealousy. And then the next level would be at your church. And then at competition. Then on the big gospel stages, because you're the open, you know, you don't want to be the opening act. You want to be the closer, you know. It's like mm -hmm. playing baseball, you know. Go as, long, go as many innings as you can, and then we're going to bring Big Bad Hank in to close out the game, and he gets all the hoop and the holler, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Right. laughs> just That's the game, man, the game. Mm. But um, So, Charles, tell us what are you doing, man. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm on your website, Amazon.com. We got Charles P. Walker. His, his album released, Life Changing, A Journey Called Grace. And then you had Silent Night that you released. A while back, I guess I don't see the date on that one. Then you had another piece out that was called uh, Do You Hear What I Hear? Um, tell us what you're doing differently now that the Internet is so powerful, man. You don't have to rely on, on uh, you know, your little Sunday, the little slots they give you guys on Sunday where, where the people can't hear gospel music if they're in church. <laughs> so tell me, right. you know, what are you doing now that the Internet is, is where it is now? What are you doing to market yourself now on a different level? Um, you know, as it's funny, uh, my manager and people, they tell me, uh, Charles, you, you gotta, you gotta get more on social media. You gotta get yourself out there. Um, I'm, I must admit, I'm not the, the world's biggest social media fan, but I know you need it to, um, get that exposure. So, uh, you know, just utilizing um, the social media avenues. Um, and another thing I'm actually going to start doing is posting more um, YouTube videos. And, then, and um, you know, it's kind of cool when I, I can go and I can log into my CD Baby account and, and see that, you know, people from all over the world have listened or purchased my uh, songs it's pretty really cool and amazing how far social media has came uh for artists now and you're right man it it, you, it it really gets you out there and gets that exposure um the thing is you know i just always pray that the right people in, in the right time uh, you know hears it and and um could be the one to really take this music career that I have to another level. 
That's right, man. Because I mean, you you've been around for a while. You know, um, are you are you for label? You're independent. 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 Now that's that's real big. Now I'm I'm meeting some real talented individuals that represent themselves. You know the you know everything goes to them. You mentioned YouTube. You know doing more videos. You know posting them to your Facebook. You know just letting it go where it go. People know where to buy your music. What else you think you need to do as a Christian man to be able to to receive God's favor for for your for your music to to blow up for you to blow up and, and be heard in every every home because it's five hundred million people on Facebook, right? Um, I I think and this is something I've uh, recently experienced or uh, gone through. Um, I was talking to a gentleman. And I was telling him I was like, you know, um, you know I want to record another project. Um, but he was like, well, what's stopping you? I was like, well, I need funds. I need money, you know. And um, so I was listening, and he was like, you know, he said, change your focus. And he said, let me explain. He said, you're focused on the provision when God wants you to focus on the position. And what he meant by that was, listen to him, pray. Be in prayer about it where God wants you to be, whether that's, am I in the right city? Or what position should you be in? And then he will provide that vision of of how that provision will come to you. So that just, that really uh, set deep in my soul and really uh, set with me. And I think um, that would be the key is really just listening to God and and really um, knowing where to be and listening to the provision and how things will be get done uh, will uh, really make a, an impact on the next level of my career or anybody's career. I think that's my opinion. <laughs> yeah, you believe in grassroots? Going back to your grassroots? Yes. Yes. So what are you doing now? What are you going to do about it? Um, I'm going to, um, I really, really want to do um, some project with some people. I just go back to when I first uh, started playing out in Birmingham and, and, and just come together with some of those musicians and um, um, create something. And then there are some things that, um, some really, I've been really fortunate to meet some really great, uh, guys and, and ladies that uh, musicians in the industry to where we can come together and we can uh, put on a show or something um, to help others you know some people that are homeless some kids that don't have um, clothes or or uh, food for lunch in schools um, and um, you know, it, it's really powerful when when you can come together as people. Uh, when you can do that, you can do anything. Yeah. You put your mind to it, and you come together, you work together, you can do it. So that's one thing I really want to do um, back as far as in my hometown where I grew up at is uh, to give back to my community and to show these kids that's coming up, you know, that you can make a difference in this world, not just sit back and wait on right. people to do it. If everybody sat back, nothing to get done. <laughs> and I think, I think that's the secret to success, man, when it comes to God's favor is that I don't think he, he gave anyone any special talent to, to, to harbor it to, for themselves. I think he gave right. it to you to share with the world, share with his people, to lift someone else up, to inspire someone else to want to, want to do. I mean, I remember, the only reason why I went into publishing was because of my dad. You know, he was, he, you know, he used to bring paper home and and allow us to be able to draw. And I remember him taking us to the company, and they had picnics and everything. I was really inspired by it. I said, "Well, look at this togetherness. I want to work here. You know, I want to go to schools when I graduate. I can get a good job at this place. You know, I did. Right. It happened. It wasn't a place I thought it was, but because <laughs> the ownership was, you know, was 
about to change over and it was it wasn't, you know, family for family anymore. It was about business. But I think like right now, I think the the teachers they can't do it by themselves. There's not enough of them. And I think that, you know, we as businessmen and, and talented artists, we need to go back where we came from. Like you hear about the athletes doing all you if you see some of the greatest athletes in the world you ever get, get a chance to really hear that story and not just see them riding around and getting out their car with their $3,000 suits on? Those dudes do a lot in their community. I mean, some of the, I live around a, in a neighborhood where a lot of the Baltimore Ravens live, and a lot of these guys are not even from this town, but they do so much. I said, here this guy is nailing a nail and, and, and building somebody's, somebody's home that he's met, somebody's poor who, who otherwise couldn't afford a house. He's helping because his, his his organization gave them money, and he's going to help build a house. And I haven't even stepped foot in that community. You know, I was like, I feel bad. But I have done those things. You know, I've been in those communities and seen how these, these celebrities, these, these athletes go out there and give. And then they, when they get on the gridiron, they're successful. God's not taking anything away from them because they're giving back a whole lot, you know. Right. So that's an, And even some of the guys that's making making – Below, you know, this barely making, the, you know, 800000 You hear about what they're doing, and they at the school's reading. Like, I remember a guy, I didn't even know he was on the team. He said, oh, yeah, he's the long snapper. He's sitting there reading to my kids. You know, I was like, he doesn't even have any kids. Right. That was crazy, you know. <laughs> so I just think that the, 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 the secret to success is, and you hear all the time. You go on YouTube and pull up some of these multi-million. I'm talking about billionaires. Those guys are giving away like almost more than half their fortune now. They ain't even giving their kids money. You know, you hear about your Warren Buffett and your Bill Gates, all these right. big time. I mean, it's like 900. It's like nine million millionaires in this country right now. If you look them up. They always stand up on the stage giving somebody a whole bunch of something. Give them, those guys get so much money to the New York Library that they want to keep the books real, real books. They don't want to just be digital anymore. You know, so that was just my piece, Charles. I think you're in the right direction. I think that's a good heart, man, to want to go back, you know, and show kids that uh, music, music can open doors for some of them. I mean, that's all they probably can do is play, but nobody's giving them a chance or inspired them. Right. That was that was my little webinar piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But uh all right, bro, we can ready to take a quick break, man. We come back. We're gonna get your final thoughts that everybody that's Charles Walker, the saxophonist, the recording artist, the man who understands what kind of plan it's gonna take to save our communities, our people, to inspire, keep music alive, all that good stuff. All right, we're gonna listen to a Another piece from, um, oh, I forgot about this person. Let me play this real quick. It's one of my top, top people, sponsors. All right, y'all, don't forget about me now. My website is up, www.positivepower21.org. We're taking displays. Remember, I got some people in the Maryland area that love to read books, love to listen to good music. Display your ad. Don't just come up on the show and disappear on me. You got you to gotta stay around for a little bit. That's right. That's what marketing and promotion is all about. Here we go. Tamika K. Are you looking for the next great read? A book filled with love, passion, betrayal, and intrigue. The award-winning novel, Season of Change, by Tamika Patrice Kane is sure to satisfy your literary sweet tooth. Check out this must-read book reviewers are calling uplifting and emotional and exceptionally great read. Deeply intense and thought-provoking. Order your copy today. Available in paperback and ebook on Amazon.com or at www.TamikaPatrice.com. Hi, I am Martha Crystal Alexis, and I'm on Positive Power 21 with Jerry Roy Slides. Woohoo! Hey, hey, thank you, Crystal. As Arthur Crystal Alexis, check out another person with a big heart given to organizations trying to help people who, who've been abused, you know, women who've been abused. You know, Rupert Hearn and other authors have banded together to do an anthology to raise money for awareness. That's a good heart. God's going to bless her. 
All right, we're talking to my man Charles Walker. God is blessing him, too. He's, he's got a plan, y'all. He's coming back, community. Alabama, he's coming back, Huey Town. He's coming back. Save somebody's life. All right, y'all. It's all about helping one another, y'all. That's why I found out the secret, y'all. God just don't want you to share your talent with yourself. He wants you to just go back where you came from. Because all of us came from something. We all wasn't born with a silver spoon in our mouths. Now, who knows about that 1%? Now, they've been born with a silver spoon. But there's some guys who created wealth on their own. And those guys are giving back a whole lot. I mean, you look at Microsoft, boy, they're giving all these computers to these schools. You know, Apple giving away tablets to a lot of these charter schools. NFL teams building football fields where kids don't be springing their ankles, getting dirty and muddy every day. You can't get this stuff out of them uniforms these days. I don't care what kind of bleach you use. They're putting down turf fields to, to make the kids run faster and they can have a decent place to play football. All this is happening. But those of you listening to my voice, you got to do something too. You wonder why you can't rise above, move forward. You got to help somebody, not destroy somebody. That's right. I know what's going on those jobs. Guys backstabbing, trying to get that little promotion. Is it really worth it? Could God will take it away from you. That's right. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. That's right. Jerry Royce Live Worldwide, y'all. You're talking to Charles P. Walker. You can get his music on Amazon.com, CD Baby. He's, he's been bought and sold worldwide. All right, Mr. Walker, your final thoughts for tonight's show. We talked about a lot, man. A lot. Yeah. Maybe, uh, well, I would just say, uh, especially for the uh, younger uh, kids that's coming up and um, wanting to um, play an instrument or sing or whatever, um, I would just say, uh, stick with it and um, um, make sure you connect yourself around positive people um, people that you um, don't want to encourage you that's going to laugh at you and everything that's not a real, a real friend uh, make sure you connect with positive people um, because then you will start uh, being positive you will start thinking positive you start uh, uh, thinking that you can do these things, and um, you'll see that happen. And just don't quit. Just keep going. You know, you know things get hard, but if you keep going. God will see you through, and He'll honor you for it. That's right. Well put. Appreciate you, Mr. Walker, coming on Positive Power Twenty One Dot Org, man. Share your music with us, man. We wish you the best out there, man. God bless your your project, your project. We hope everything work out for you, man. We'd love to have you back on next time you drop another project. People need to know what's going on. Know where you, what cities you're going to be touring. Don't forget about us here at PositivePower21.org, man. We can share all your your tour dates with, with our people because our, our people are nationwide and worldwide. All right, man. Sure. sure. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this last I want to say, if anyone's going to be out in the, you know, that's listening in the uh, North Point, North Carolina area, uh, me and some uh, other musicians, uh, friends, and I will be uh, performing in that area this weekend. So you can go to my website and check that out. It's charlespwalker.com. Go to the calendar. You'll see it there, and you can also uh, check it out on um, uh, BernardHarris.com. He has it on his website as well. So if you're in the area, please look us up, come out, enjoy some good music. That's right, man. You guys going to videotape it, man? Do a video for YouTube? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. I'd like to get a copy of that from you too, man. Just inbox okay. me when it's uploaded. So we can um, put on us. So we put up on our site, man. Just let everybody know, the Positive Power Twenty One dot org is up and running strong. I'm not just broadcasting on Spreaker dot com anymore. It's just that's just our platform to stream our show. So come on out. We're gonna be hosting a number of uh, indie performers, comedians, 
gospel performers. You be able to see their videos. People that's unknown to you with extreme talent. I'm just being blessed meeting people with some talent. I just can't believe they're talking to me. I'm, I'm still pinching myself that Charles T. Walker spent some time with me. I never heard a person play a horn like that before in my life. You know, there wasn't a you know a professional like he is, man. That's that blew me away, man. I'm used to hearing church people playing. <laughs> that was awesome, man. I'm glad you was there to be part of this. So thank, thank you, you so much, much man. I thank God for now you to be with us, man. Awesome. All right, y'all. Time for me to go. Enjoy everyone's live worldwide. You stay awesome all week long. And I'll see you again. It'll be Monday through Thursday. But don't forget, we'll be taking a break for spring break. But we will be 24-7 up on you. Just visit Positive Power. You can listen to anything you want. 327 episodes. Charles P. Walker, 327. Thank God. Take care, everybody. Bless you. Thank you for tuning in to Jerry Voice Live on PositivePower21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash PositivePower21. This is a Voice Enterprises production. And don't forget about replay on Facebook.com forward slash Jerry Voice Live. Prince of 
Jesus in the midst of the storm. That's why we call you Jesus. You are with our power in your hands. Heaven and earth shall adore your name. Every knee shall bow, every tongue proclaim. You are God, you are God. Oh, my God. 
Until this life Oh, Jesus, you're my best friend, and you're my best, my best. You might be feeling like your hopes are lost. Be your friend, you see the strength in your heart. Oh, you might be feeling like it's pointless. Be not weary, and we'll do it. No, this is the season. You're gonna reap if you faint not. You might be waiting on your break, but they didn't wait on the Lord. Shout a new best strength. Now the one we that's in the door. My God is coming to the rescue. Just put your faith in Him and know that He's gonna do what He said He would do. So put your head to the sky and say, Lord, we're leaning on You. Just an idiot, nobody but yeah. Cause you never let me down You've always been around No, you're not like my other friends On you I can't depend, I can't depend yeah. I'm leaning on you yeah. I'm just an idiot, yeah. nobody but yeah. Cause you never let me down You've always been around 
Jesus, you're my best friend. You're my best friend. Yo, I'm leaning now. Yo, depending now. Yo, nobody but yo, but you never let me down. You've always been around. No, you're not like my other friends. On you, I can't depend. I can't depend. Yo, I'm leaning now. Yo, depending now. Yo, nobody but yo, but you never let me down. You've always been around. Jesus, you're my best friend. friend.
out who you working for. We No, we can't. And to my pastor, Robert L. Banks Jr., and all the sisters and the mothers and the brothers that live in their father's gospel. And if they're not, you need to get with the vision. Because that's how this time, don't you know that? Come on, preach, preach up. Philadelphia, Camden, New Jersey, Delaware, come on, Atlanta. Lord is upon my life. He 
even those are times I miss the mark. Sometimes I miss the mark. It's your grace that keeps my heart. You save me. All the wonders I've experienced. Yeah. I can never. Oh. All the wonders I've experienced. I can never. So just know that the favor of the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> 
to Nassau, Bahamas, August 28th through 31st in 2015. The cruise will feature a meet and greet networking event with radio stations and the businesses that support independent gospel artists. There will be two artist showcases. So, if you are an independent gospel artist, a radio station personality, a promoter, a manager, or a business that supports independent gospel artists, you don't want to miss this cruise. For more information, visit our website, www.igospelmusic.com or call 904-866-2762. I Gospel Music, where independent artists get played. Hi, I'm Melody Piscina. Join me on the I Gospel Music Cruise to Nassau, Bahamas. August 28th through the 31st, 2015. I'll be performing during the Artist Showcase, and don't forget to pick up my CD on iTunes. For more information, visit www.igospelmusic.com and click on the Cruise button. Oh, come on in, lift those hands. Join us on the iGospel Word channel right here at igospelmusic.com and also on the iGospel Music app with preaching and teaching 24 hours hours a day, seven days a week. I, Gospel Word, taking the gospel to every corner of the world. Shalom, you're my peace. What a mighty God we serve. 
Blessing me perpetually, especially for the things you do. I just want to emphasize there is none like you. Anybody want to praise your over Jire, eternal God, never going to retire. If you got a need, he's going to provide it. Love never for never going to expire. Ha, you strong like a lion, tall and defiant. No, I'm not lying. God must be handsome, I'm made in his life. This mighty God we serve, and I'm praising the right. Jire, my provider, Jehovah Rapha, you're my healer. Jehovah Shalom, you're my peace. Jehovah Shalom, you're my peace. What a mighty God we serve. 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 Freedom to you. Oh, what an awesome 
you. Come on, let's take it over here. Hey.